this is the Block Party of Minecraft podcast, episode 119. We're your hosts, Bearded Sloth. And Little C. Get all our info at theblockpartymc.com. Now let's get the Block Party started. Nice, short, sweet intro again. And you have to comment on it to make it longer. Exactly. We gotta have some kind of thing. I kind of do miss the hackiness of our lines, though. I don't know, uh, listeners. What do you guys much. think? It, it was, was getting too much cringe. We're kind of handing it over to the listeners more. Get right into the comments for the show. Remember, we talk about anything and everything. We don't necessarily have a topic. Anything Minecraft related, get your comments in we every just, week. Can we just give the microphones to the listeners and then they can do the show? I'm kind of okay with that. We do have a voicemail set up, so you can leave your comments right there on voicemail. We did happen to get one voicemail this week, and I debated on playing it, but it was literally just somebody randomly calling and saying, hello? I have no idea who it was or anything. Probably some random call. That's funny. It kind of was. I I almost played it, but I didn't. So whoever you are out there, make sure next time you say who you are and why you're calling and what you want to talk about. For example, hello, this message was from Little C. Yeah, that would be perfect. Exactly. All right. We did get a comment on our Discord from Kangamar. Just wanted to mention some more of the animals in the world. Animals add-on we use on our realm. Also, he has... That's great news that they are upping the draw distance in the preview. Big cats. Yes, we have lions, tigers, white tigers, leopards, snow leopards, panthers, and pumas. They are dangerous, but can be tamed and given a saddle. We should be able to just slap a saddle on any mob in Minecraft. I kind of agree. I I want to be able to ride a polar bear. I was going to say the ender dragon. Oh, that would be even more fun. Fly around. I'm sure there's mods out oh, there, right? 100%. On Java. Yeah, that would be fun. And tame it. And even little dragons. Why don't we just have dragons? Maybe we should just add dragons to Minecraft. Well, we have the dragon egg that sits in our base and does nothing ever. Yeah, we should be able to hatch it. Come you know, on, people what are been, we doing? You, I like how you've just thought of this. Everyone's been talking about this for 10 years. It takes a while for my old man brain to think of these things. We know, BS. We know. Plus, I just take everybody else's ideas and make it like it's mine, at least in my head. It's not that I'm trying to steal their ideas. It's that I have no idea that I've heard it before. He's losing it. So, Kangamar, you mentioned this is going back to our beta preview last week, I think, talking about them increasing the view distance on realms. That is a huge deal. That kind of is a game changer for the server idea because that was one of the main benefits of having a server, at least to me, was to be able to customize some of this and get those. It's the only reason I didn't buy a realm for like a single player and I just used regular single player because I would put it on a realm because then you get built in backups and stuff. And then you can play on any device whenever you want, which is nice. But it's because of the render distance was so slow. Low. Still, I play on like 60 or 30. I think I play on 32 render distance. So only 20. I think is what they said. Now, do you recall if they were changing the simulation distance at all yet? Or it's I don't still at four? I don't. Because that's pretty I low. I always play on four simulation distance. It makes the game harder. It, it does. And a lot of farms and stuff are built that way now because they know that most realms and people officially playing are kind of limited to that four simulation distance. We did have Jericho SMP on eight simulation distance on season two, I believe. I like that, but it did seem a lot less busy with mobs because of the mob caps and the way spawning rates are. So that's something to think about. Now, we did just recently increase our view distance up to what I set it to. Do you remember? I think 32. Yeah, 32. So that's double than what we've been used to. And it's been nice to be able to see it. Now, it's very overpowered if you play single player and you have a good computer. If you're indurating. Put it up to 98 chunks or however high your chunks can go because in the end there's not a ton to load. You can see every end city that has an elytra ship and you're good to go. Now, I don't know what to think about these cats. I like cats now more so than before, but all I think about is lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, lions and tigers and bears. Yeah, that we need lions and tigers. Yes, I agree. And like brown bears. That, that would, would be, be like fun. 
I might have to check this world animals add on out. I'm going to have to find the link or whatever. Kangamar, feel free to DM me if you want the link on where you get it from, because it does sound epic. And I have some other server owners I bet would really like to have it on there. Yeah, we need more. SMPs. We need more animals and stuff in Minecraft. We always say this, but they need to update the way animals and stuff work before they add more animals. Like the spawning rates. It, there should be spawning limits for each mob and some mobs more than others and stuff. And it'd really make the game feel more ambient. And all the technical players are going to be yelling at me, throwing their whatever they're listening to the show on out the window because I said that. But I don't care about the technical players because I think the game should be more like less. It shouldn't be made for the technical players. The technical players should make things for the game. I can see that. I definitely believe they could add even triple the amount of mobs that spawn now and still be okay on most devices. Yeah. And I think that's why they're slowly getting rid of some of the older stuff too, increasing some of this. I feel spawn rates are better overall. I just see, it seems to me that the game is running more efficient than it ever has. And they're working on that, but they are adding things just like the caves and cliffs. I mean, that added all those layers added a lot more things that had to be computed and it's a balancing act all the time i'm sure and they have these discussions and but more animals more kinds of animals but it like you said it wouldn't make sense to just add all these animals without the spawn rates being increased so my question to you kangamar is do you still do you have enough animals spawning around you with all these add-ons or is it just few and far between let's see what you've been up to this week in minecraft the only minecraft i played was a very tiny bit on jericho season one world which i use for a single player i was doing this a while ago and really enjoyed it because season one is my favorite season because it really wasn't a real season of jericho and it was more of like a single player kind of like it was a multiplayer but like there's a lot of nostalgic for me on that world because I still remember everything in that world. So I like playing it as a single player. And I did that a while ago and did all kinds of cool stuff to it. And then that file corrupted. So I got back to the original what we got off PlayStation 4 world. That save file and started again at that point. It's not like I'm starting over because I still have all the old gear. But it's all diamond gear. There is not a piece of netherite or any new stuff in the nether. Unless you go far out and like update stuff. With caves and cliffs and stuff is not around spawn at all. Yeah, that world is cool. I would love to maybe take, what do you call it when you take the piece of the world, you outline it and take it, put it in a command block. What are those called? Structure blocks, right? So you take a structure block, take spawn of that world and make it in one of our Jericho SMP seasons sometime. Do you think that would be cool? Almost as a nostalgic, here, go check this out and just clear out some land and paste it in there. That would be too big of a project to build. To build, you think? Yeah, it'd be huge. Not the whole world, just maybe like spawn area or something. Yeah, spawn area is huge, unless you're just going to build a castle. Well, the castle, maybe some of the shops or something. Your RV, I'll never forget that first RV you built there. That was awesome with the hidden underground stuff. I don't know what was going on in that RV, but got to be cautious. Uh the RV has a lot of flowers around it, vines growing all across it, and a license plate that says Save the Whales. It's an interesting RV. Now, do you have any of our other old save worlds from way back? I could get them. I don't think I could get some of them. Okay. I've tried to get one of the really old ones, and I tried to convert it, but it was a PlayStation 3 world. They no longer allow you to move them to PS4. Uh, so I tried to get PS3 into Java Edition back into Bedrock Edition. That did not go well. Yeah, it gets crazy with the transitions. It would be nice if they just used the same type of file for all across, and then you could move it from here and there. I might have to go back and check out some of these old worlds. Even Season 1, I've done it a few times. Like I've flown around in creative just to show people and things like that, kind of how we started and whatnot. But it is always... So nice to have the nostalgia. So this week, I, of course, I've been live streaming every week. That's been going well. So I am playing Minecraft, but usually only during the live stream is when I'm actually playing the game for some reason. 
those jungle saplings that I thought I lost and forgot to get, I found them. I actually planted them and me being the veteran player that I am, put them in a two by two to make a large jungle tree. I didn't realize that it wouldn't grow unless you add bone meal to it. Are you sure? At least it didn't grow the whole time it was planted. Huh. And on the live stream, some of the people watching confirmed that's what I needed, bone meal. And I didn't have any. Now that I think about it, I might go get some fish because that's a great way to get bones now is by taking your sword to the fish. I worked on the house a little bit. I was trying to decide on the roof outline, get that all done. And basically kind of how you have... The supports, not the supports. What would you call that? The trim pieces around the roof, basically. I'm using deep slate tile stairs for that. I think that'll look nice. And then I was trying to decide what wood to use. But then you, Little C, came up with a great idea. Probably using cobblestone. Yeah, I think that'd look the best. I mean, your house is ugly. You're using acacia wood for it. But there's not really a way to save your house currently. Oh, it's beautiful. You got to check out my live streams. It's so fun. I'm probably going to do that maybe later after recording this podcast or possibly tomorrow. We'll just have to see how everything goes for the weekend. I am enjoying that. I was hoping to do a bonus one this week, but just how everything went with Thanksgiving and stuff, I didn't take the time to do that. Another thing I want to do in that world, I want to go adventuring for villagers. I'd love to get an iron farm going. Iron farms are so nice to have. Now, you're all against this automation and making farms, little C. I I see that look you're giving me over there. Yeah, I don't like to automate things. But I love it. And it'll be a great way if I can, especially if I can make it close enough that it's running while I'm building and things like that. I'm fine with automating if you only want to enjoy the world for a few months. But if you want the world to last for years, don't automate a lot of stuff. Well, at this rate, though, for as slow as I'm going, I even if I automate everything, well, you're I'm just still bad playing at the for game. years. Yeah. I'm just not quick at the game. It's not that I'm bad. I'm just not you quick. You died how many times? Only two. And that was early on. We're not talking about that. Yeah, early so, on deaths are the most pathetic. Moving forward, I'm looking forward to finishing up this season of Jericho S&P. We start always around the New Year's is when we start a fresh new world, new season. Really cool. I love when people start decorating for Christmas at the end of the world and stuff. That's fun. Usually we have an official end and then we open it up, kind of have an anarchy week or a few days where y'all go crazy over there and see how many withers you can have. I got to go through and finish some stuff and spawn. So that it's done. Yeah. And now's the time. You got about a month left. That's it. So finish up your big projects, but don't stop playing. Make sure you say hi to everybody. And then that brings us to looking forward to season five. Really excited for that. We're going to change things up. I've been discussing with our community a bit what they like, what they dislike. It seems like people want less restrictions. Oh, shocking. Who would have thought that? Everyone doesn't like Bearded Sloth's dumb rules. Crazy. So currently, we kind of, we didn't want, like, Spawn to be crowded with cheap builds and things. So we've always said that to build past a certain point, like 500 blocks out or something, right? Now, you can build your shops and things in a shopping district near Spawn. That's always worked out. Which is funny. We've thought this for the last season three and season four, but we look back. The favorite seasons, at least mine, are season one and season two when there weren't many restrictions. Everybody has different things that they like. Some people really like that, that it's not getting crowded. And you have some people like to keep uniform builds and styles and things. And then there's Bearded Sloth, who's just like making rules just so he can force people to follow them. That's not my motivation. That is his motivation. Don't let him fool you. But we are changing that a bit. So, but... I don't think we're going to open it up as much as we have for applications. So if you have been a previous member, we know you already. You're probably a shoe in if we know we can trust you and it's going to last. We're not going to have that inactive list as much. 
So we're expecting you to continue to play and enjoy without the restrictions or the fear of, hey, I couldn't play this month. Just come in and out when you can. I think there'll be a lot less new people coming in. Maybe at the beginning, we'll bring new applications in and go through those. We do have an application process. Got to be 13 plus. If you're a teenager, need to know somebody, those kind of things are still staying in place. The other thing, though, was the portal making. I don't know how to feel about this because we like the portals to link properly. But somebody like you, Little C, that isn't very skilled at building portals to make them link correctly, you're going to go build portals and then end up at somebody else's base all of a sudden. That's the fun of that is the fun of Minecraft SMPs, never knowing where you're going to end up going through another portal. So I can see it being a little less organized for those kind of things. Currently, we have a portal team. We always build yeah, the portals. Yeah, but like with a portal team, I don't want to wait. To, if someone like a member wants another portal, then they have to wait like a month before it gets built. And then it's like, well, then they it don't want to play anymore. It never took more than three days. Most of the time it was done the well, evening. Yeah, but most of the time, if they want a portal, they want it done right as they request it. So... I am thinking for this next season, maybe doing some live streaming on the block party of Jericho SMP. I don't know if you're interested in making any of that content, Little C. Don't know how you feel about that. I think it might be cool. Or maybe videos of Jericho SMP. I encourage our players, by the way, if you are have your channel or anything, to do that. We love that. We had a bit of that on all the seasons, really. Some people have made videos here and there, but it never really took off. So I'm hoping maybe I can take the lead on that, play a little bit of that. I don't know what you think about that little C. Oh, maybe. I don't really know. Would you be interested in making content yourself on Jericho SMP for our Block Party YouTube channel? Probably not, but maybe. I don't know. Eh, you can fun. make it. Not yeah, that anyone will watch saying. it, but. Well, there you go. You are the better live streamer. I will give you that much. So I think people would enjoy that. I spent a lot of time this week actually helping out another server owner. They were having all kinds of issues. They have add-ons, they have expansive biomes and more food and all these other add-ons they have. And a lot of errors, they were having tons of lag problems, which is kind of a problem overall when you start getting a lot of entities, they have the mob heads. If you have a lot of those in one spot, that's gonna cause lag. Not sure what was going on, but they were using a certain server hosting company, and they don't show you CPU usage, which is usually a sign, meaning they're sharing your node with several other servers and not giving you all of the CPU to be used. I'm guessing that's most of their problem. I helped them really late last night, actually, getting them set up, move to Bisect Hosting, which you guys know, that's what we end up switching to. I'm really loving what they're doing with that over there, working out well. Got them all switched over. Seems to be working good. Of course, the add-ons still have problems. That is an issue with add-ons in general, is knowing what you're getting and where you're getting them from. You know, Little C, there's a lot of junk out there in the modding community and broken, pa broken packs and all that stuff. So it gets kind of crazy. With that, you got to be careful too because you don't want to click the wrong download link, get all kinds of viruses on your computer and whatnot. There's all kinds of crazy stuff in Minecraft modding. And then, if we switch over to real life stuff, what I've been doing, I was able to get our Yahoo mail account that we use for some of our accounts sign in and things. I was able to get that back, so that's nice. And then it was Thanksgiving, so I've had extra time off at home. I did truck a little bit not a whole lot this week though and we went to cracker barrel for thanksgiving lunch that was kind of fun nice not to have to cook the food and everything like that so thank you workers for being out there on thanksgiving day and serving us now i will say though our dinner for thanksgiving was amazing it was frozen pizza and the question was jacks or tombstone that's the only decision we had to make that was the best Thanksgiving dinner ever. It was nice. It was fun. Watched football, all that, and just took it easy for Thanksgiving. So that was a nice change. We did get our car back this week for all you guys interested. It's up and running. Still have some leaks here. Getting that all figured out and fixed up. 
on the way to that Thanksgiving lunch, though, you and I were enjoying the DVD player in the car, and we watched Back to the Future in the backseat of the car. Why we w- why we would do that ever? I don't know, but we were toddler we're toddlers. We were watching a movie in the backseat of a car. It was so fun though, and Holy Bookworm just drove and we figured out how to get the audio through our headphones while she could jam out to her music and it was a good time. Little C, what you been up to in I, real life? I went with you one week or one day this week to make sure you behaved. Spoiler alert. Beard is lost in Naba Haven, the semi. I never do. That's no fun. Yeah, he doesn't know what the word behave means. We, yeah, we got our car. Everything's the same as what you said for a lot of it, but, uh. Yeah, we've been hanging out all week. You're kind of sick of me by now, aren't you? I'm always sick of you. That happens. And then we got our Christmas decorations put up in the house. We, our Christmas tree, though, we don't have any ornaments on it because we have this little creature named Onyx, our kitten. She likes to climb fully into the tree. Now, luckily, we don't have a real tree, and we have a fake tree. But she will climb all the way to the top of that tree, and then she'll look at you, and you just see her, like, hidden inside of the tree, and it's really funny. Yeah, we could not put the ornaments up at all. They'd come down immediately. Luckily, we don't have a fancy tree or anything. I'm waiting for her to knock the whole tree down. Oh, it's going to happen. I guarantee it's going to happen at some point. It's been fun watching her, though. Something else I just thought of, and you're kind of helping me out a little bit, is redesigning our website. So if you've been to the blockpartymc.com, it does show a construction page. You can click up. We have the tabs to our YouTube channel directly, the podcast, and then you can get to however you want to listen, Google Podcasts, Spotify, whatever. From there, all those are up there currently working. And you can join our Discord. I do have a link right there, a button to push to join our Discord. I don't know when we're going to get the website done. I'm hoping by the end of this weekend, we can at least get it kind of functional and looking well. We don't have the Jericho SMP tab up currently. I'll try to get that up and running because we're probably going to want get people that want to join us for season five. It's usually a lot of hype when we start a new season. So that's only about a month away. That pretty much sums up our past week. Anything else you want to talk about? In I'm, our not, past week? I'm not ready for it to be Christmas time. It feels like this year just started. I don't know why it's Christmas time already. I don't know what happened. It happens to me every year and it gets worse as you get older there, little C. That's a sign of you getting old. Man, it must feel like a day every year for you then, old man. Something like that. Now for the past week in Minecraft or info from Minecraft.net. All right, we, it seems like they're kind of taking it somewhat easy, but got good news. We've got Minecraft Java 1.20.3 pre-release 1. So I, that, no, that's not good news. They still haven't released replay mod for 1.20.2, and we're, we're all waiting for it. And now they're releasing 1.20.3, so I'll have to wait for it to release for that, too. Oh, all and your all mods the mods stuff. and everything. Yep, yep. So they're cranking those out, really. It came out Monday, November 20th, 2023. Changes, the data pack version is now 26. The resource pack version is now 22. Changes to downloaded slash world resource pack handling, renamed Minecraft grass block and item to Minecraft short grass. They have fixes. These are usually the problems and they fixed them. Pause tick delta updated when the game is unpaused rather than paused. Resource pack update by a hash doesn't work. Server resource pack is not re-downloaded when a hash mismatch is detected with the previously downloaded version. Edit box length restrictions can result in unpaired surrogate characters. Control plus backspacing a word with non-BMP characters in an edit box deletes additional characters. Breezes in minecarts or boats are passive. Oh, that would be a great way to get around those guys. Breeze cannot attack in deep water. What does deep water mean? How deep? Yeah, I don't know. Is that maybe two blocks deep? Or maybe. you think it'd be Maybe more? they have to be underwater or something. Anyways, they're supposed to be able to attack you, but they're fixing this. Charged creeper slash wither armor is rendered incorrectly. 
number of block drops from TNT explosions is capped to 16. In crystals in TNT minecarts that explode without a source entity deal no damage at all, breezes won't attack while under the effects of levitation status, the interpolation of particle entity and block entity transforms is disrupted when pausing the game in single player. Monsters hunted advancement requires killing a breeze even when they're disabled. Scoreboard players reset no longer works. Unformatted objects in scoreboard error messages. And of course, there's always more in the change logs. You can check that out. We do have a clickable link in our description. They, of course, want you to join their official Discord server now for feedback and all the changes, and you can discuss it. It's actually a pretty nice Discord. Also this week came out the same Java 1.20.3 pre-release 2. This one came out Wednesday, November 22nd, 2023. Changes? Breeze wind charges now break decorated pots, chorus flowers, and pointed dripstone blocks upon collision. They're just going to make a mess of the place, aren't they? Yep. Don't build any redstone anywhere near a breeze. That's going to be crazy. Fixes here. Again, problems, and they should have fixed them in this pre-release. Command suggestions within the command block interface don't disappear when the console command field is unselected. Certain inputs pressed whilst in F3 plus escape pause will be carried out after game is unpaused. A command with multiple redirect modifiers can ignore max command chain length. The start free snapshot realm element can be selected or remain selected, causing its tooltip to erroneously be visible when other interfaces are open. Player teleports not shown in subtitles when an ender pearl lands far from the thrower. Subtitles need to be added to Bedrock Edition. I, those are such a nice feature. I'm really surprised they haven't added that yet. I'm not sure what's stopping them on that one. Renamed arrows are referred as just arrow in the death message. Rain texture doesn't loop correctly. Decorated pots with loot table desync item consumption if it cannot be inserted in the pot. Wind charge cannot break decorated pots. Arrows on fire set breezes on fire despite being deflected. The styled number format uses the resource location result. Backspace in Anvil no longer works when renaming an item. The Minecraft grass item does not get upgraded to Minecraft short grass. So that's kind of funny. I love that when the pre-release has a change or a fix and then it's still not fixed in the second one and you see it and they're fixing that supposedly. And that They say they're fixing it. Right. And it kind of comes and goes. I know when I code packs, I'm like, oh, this should definitely work. And I code it and then I release it or something. Then I go check it and yeah, it's still not working or I misplaced a comma or something. So that kind of stuff can happen. I didn't see any Minecraft Bedrock stuff this week at all. So they must be taking the week off, apparently. Shocking them not doing anything. <laughs> I think that sums up everything they've been up to. They haven't been up to much. Not a whole lot. Now it's time for do 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 listener questions. Our first question comes from Kangamar. Do you have any unusual setup for playing Minecraft? And then he put a picture. So here's a description of his picture. Go join our Discord if you want to see it. One computer was running Java, one Bedrock, and another running a website that lets you type code and alter a Minecraft world in real time. That poster on the wall was one of the design ideas they released for 1.20. I just like the idea that it was me and my son in a boat exploring a swamp together. That one was the concept art for the swamps, I think. And there was a boat and everything. It is a great poster. It is. And then listeners will have to visit your Discord to have a look. Yes. Join, join the, the Discord. Discord. Kangamar knows where to be. He knows to be a part of the Discord. Why aren't you, listener? Come on. So I love that setup, Kangamar. I definitely want to hear more about this real-time coding stuff. That sounds super cool to me. Like I said, I love that poster. I love posters. I have posters all around us in here. Most of them I actually got from like GameStop. When they have games and stuff, they usually throw them out. So sometimes when you go in and you 
have a lot of charisma on your video game character and you go in there with that, sometimes you can talk him into giving you a poster or two. Or in Bearded Sloth's case, where his charisma is at zero, he just walks in and is like, uh, can poster have me die? Not quite that bad. No. I might be a little more demanding, though. Give me the stinking posters, man. Now, talking about our setup, usually I'm playing in my truck on my laptop. Before that, I was actually playing in my truck on a PlayStation. I took my PlayStation with me, TV and everything. I've always used a PlayStation controller, even on my laptop. That's what I use to play. Now, when I am home, I'm using this podcast studio for my setup. It's really nice. I actually set up my old 24-inch TV from my truck in here as a monitor and also have a 32-inch TV mounted on the wall that I use as a monitor. And they're all apart from each other. But that gives me three separate monitors, including my laptop screen. And it's really nice to have that, especially when I start coding and things. comes in super handy. Eventually, I would like to upgrade to real monitors here, kind of have the three monitor set up with the angles and everything. Maybe the center one being one of the ultra wide curved screens or something that could get all fancy with that, but definitely not there yet. The soundboard that we use to run these microphones, I play with that. Having the headphones is really nice. You hear the sounds coming from all directions. So I love the ability to play on that. Sound makes a huge difference with everything. And I do have studio monitor speakers is what they're called. Very crisp. Sometimes I'll rock out to Spotify with those. You like listening to that too, Little C. Yeah I, yeah, I can listen to it from my office. Yeah, it's really nice. And they're fairly small. They're not that big, but they put out a big punch for sure. Now, Kangamart, I love the fact that you related to the poster with your son and you playing and just hanging out in a boat and stuff. I could so relate to little C and I doing that too. Aw, it brings feelings in this. Yeah, none of the posters in this office. Maybe if there's one like of like someone getting absolutely destroyed, that's us playing video games. You just destroy the crap out of me in the old video games that you used to play when you were a kid. Back in my day. So for I have a pretty generic gaming setup. It's nothing like super different than your average thing you see. I have a gaming PC, two monitors on like a monitor mount. And then the only unusual thing that I can think of is, well, one, I have two posters of my logos. I have my Discord YouTube channel logo and my main channel logo just on posters on the wall. I'm not self-obsessed or anything. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you talk about me and then i have the weird part is i use a go XLR mini for my microphone and everything and then that has a cool software where i can control like spotify volume system volume and discord volume all on physical sliders but i use wireless headphones and with the go xlr i have to hear the output of the go xlr and not the computer but my wireless headphones they don't use an adapter with like an aux cord they plug into my computer with a usb so I have another aux, I have an aux cord plugged into the headphones of the Go XLR going into the in line in of my computer. And then I had to change Windows settings to monitor that through my wireless headphones. But it works. But it works. Is it low latency? It's the same as it would be with normal USB. Okay, not bad then. So yeah, and with the wireless headphones that I have, it's super, the reason I bought these is because I can connect them to my phone with Bluetooth. In my computer with USB, and I can hear both at the same time, or I can just like just have them both connected. So if I get a phone call, or whatever, and I'm doing stuff on my computer, I can still just use the headphones. And that's really nice. And there for a long time, you were live streaming, and you had a really nice microphone. That Go XLR had enough preamp for you, turn up and everything for that microphone. Yeah, the Go XLR Mini is what I have. It has a lot of good settings. Now, the thing that sucks about it is there's no official like support. The company doesn't do anything anymore. Okay. But like it works, and if it gets bad enough, there's plenty of third party support because so many people use it. Yeah, and that's nice. Are you still wanting to upgrade your microphone at some point, or not as important? Not really. I don't need to upgrade it, but I might just like switch it out for a different one to put that one in here or something i don't know 
Yeah, and you love looking at other people's setups, so I'm sure you really appreciate Kangamar's picture. That yeah, he that posted. was awesome. It looks epic. Really like it. You can see a little bit of my setup in my live streams. I just show the the back end of it. I think but I have posted. You. Yeah, I have posted a few of the studio, but not since we put these other TVs in here for monitors. I don't think I might have to post that in the Discord. Make sure to join that. All right, our second question. Oh, wait a minute. There isn't one. We ran out of questions from you listeners. Y'all are slacking. We need more questions. Make sure you get them in. Join our Discord. If you can't be a part of our Discord or something, totally get it. You can email us. Totally cool. We won't email you back spam or anything like that. I promise. I really don't. You leave me a voicemail, I might send you one text just to say thank you, or if you didn't say who you are or something, I might ask, but that's it. And you can text us directly to, to the numbers that we're going to give in our outro, so stick around. But first, the reason you continue to listen to all of our rambling on about rambling on, Holy Bookworms Joke of the Week. Why did the banana visit the doctor? She wasn't peeling well. <laughs> <sighs> Thank you, Holy Bookworm, for those jokes. I love them very much. Are we much ever so. going to get good jokes that aren't super cringy? Not They're with terrific. Holy Bookworm. We're going to continue with it. You can help support the show by subscribing to the podcast. Find the link in the description to subscribe. It truly helps us out and is super appreciated. Best of all, though, You'll get access to more of us with the After Hours Show and, of course, our first 49 cringy fill, cringe-filled episodes of The Block Party. Help us get the word out about The Block Party Podcast by telling everyone about the show. Visit theblockpartymc.com. We want to hear from you. We love your comments and questions. You can email us at contact at theblockpartymc.com or leave us a voicemail or text us at one Two six zero two two zero eight two two five. Again, that is one two six zero two two zero eight two two five. I had to give you that voice. He had to do it in the radio voice. All right, all. Thank you for being here. We truly do appreciate it. Make sure to tell everyone about the Block Party, a Minecraft podcast. I'm Bearded Sloth, and now I gotta eat my coffee. And I'm Little C, and I'm gonna go make an Ender Dragon my pet.